today we finally get interior put in the giveaway truck. Hey, welcome to the Odd Rod Garage. We have had a lot of requests to show some of the older footage we had on the giveaway truck. We never showed much regarding the upholstery that we did on it. And uh, coming up probably next week, we're gonna have a hopefully a running and driving video for you. We haven't ever done that one for you. Things got so fast paced at the end there that man, we were just doing everything we could to try and figure it out and, and get it put together. So anyway, this is sort of a flashback so, uh, woo, that should look weird. I'll show you a little bit of the interior. We put some carpeting in it. Uh, we did our own seat because we couldn't find an upholstery guy to do it for a reasonable price. So we bought a professional seat cover and we learned how to do upholstery. So it actually turned out pretty nice. Hope you guys enjoy this episode and uh, we'll give you a run and drive video here soon. Hang on for the ride. So we're going to be messing with putting some upholstery on a seat. You remember I talked a while back and said we couldn't find an upholstery company that would do it for a reasonable price. So we've bought a high quality uh, original fitting cover and we're going to do a little repair on the foam that's there. We've already previously stripped the seats down and we've done some painting on the metal section so that when we put the cover over it, it'll look all nice. But I'm going to bring it on in here. I'm going to show you how we're going to repair some of the foam and we're going to get this seat looking pretty. All right, so as you can see here, we have a seat that's got a few problems. Trust me, this is by far not the worst I've ever seen. But we have some uh, inconsistencies here. We have some indentations. We're gonna try and take care of a little bit of that. And over here are some divots from fat butt sitting on it. So we're gonna try and fill some of these. We're gonna end up putting the skin all the way across it just so we can try and make it look a little bit better. You know, there's a little bit of misshapenness here. We're going to try and remove a little bit of that to give us a better line across there. I'm not an upholstery guy, but I play one on TV. No, I'm not an upholstery guy, but I'll try and make it as good as I can. It's not going to be perfect, but these are street driven trucks. We're not worried about million dollar interiors. So let's get cracking. So with all the material shortages that are going on right now, you can't hardly get anything. So I actually ended up going to Home Depot and getting some carpet padding, which will work perfectly fine. But we're gonna make an entire cover over this, try and equal some of this out. But in the meantime, we're gonna try and flatten it first with some little pieces that we cut and put down in here. And then we'll make one, one entire thing over the top. All right, let's open up this thing and see if we can get any help because uh, I don't know what I'm doing. But I can tell you this much. I had a comment from one of our subscribers and they said, you know, we enjoy the fact that you're just a couple of yahoos working out of a lean-to in the backyard. Just showing that, you know, you can build a pretty cool truck without spending a million dollars. Now, don't get me wrong, Dave Kendig does some of the most awesome work in the whole wide world. But I don't know anybody in my group of friends, which is only two people, who can afford to do one of Dave Kendig's cars. Uh, they're insane expensive. That being said, even some of this is pretty expensive, but not compared to what he's doing. A lot of money spent there, lots of money. So I went to Home Depot and got some carpet padding, and we're gonna use this nice Gorilla Spray adhesive. You spray both sides, let it tack up a little bit, and then uh, stick it together. So we're gonna see how this works. Get this thing cleaned up first. All right, so you see this carpet padding I have. It's just squishy foam, and it's got a nice little mesh on the back, so it holds it together. So we're going to cut off some little pieces, and we're going to we're going to glue some down in the indentations to try and get rid of that that pock mark. Now it's going to have a line, and we'll trim trim that up a little bit. But then afterwards, we're going to put an entire coat over the entire thing, and that should be able to help us make it a little bit better. So let's see, we've got some little guys here. Mm. See, just something as simple as that. You just go down and fill that up and it just helps. So we will try and angle cut some of this so that it fits in a little bit better. And we're gonna make a mess on the floor today, but we'll clean it up later. We'll angle cut those edges so that it drops down in there just a little bit better. Maybe you can see 
what I'm talking about. See, it drops in there a little bit better. Now, there'll be stuff left over there. That's all right. By the time we put this over, we're just, we're looking for the major holes right now. Those holes typically aren't square, so we'll give it a little bit of a shape to it. Again, we'll trim it off like this, just to help it end in down in there a little bit. So we'll get us some pieces put together like this, then we're gonna go through and whoo -hoo, Gorilla Glue everything. And trust me, I have never used Gorilla Glue before, but it's supposed to be good. We'll see. For sure we want one right down in there. And sometimes we will have to double up. Like if it's deep enough, we'll put one there and then we'll put one over the top. I don't think that's the case here. But I was just letting you know. I figure if we take care of some of this along the way, it might make my life a little easier in the long run. So to do that, we're going to bring our trash can just a little bit closer. I might even be able to use some of these little scraps to just sort of merge them down in there and make our own, our own foam. Spray the adhesive there and then just push some stuff down in there and make our own little plug. Hey, and that's good maturity usage too. I'm going to shake this stuff up. It might work. We'll put a little coating over the top. That'll help to adhere it. So if you double coat the stuff, supposedly it's supposed to work better. We'll see. Allow to dry one to three minutes and then stick it together. All right, let's see what it does. This looks pretty good. All righty, let's get down here. All right, so we got a big hole here. All right, so we have some big divots here and we're gonna have to build up some pieces in there. We might use, try and use some of this scrap material down in there. We might fill that in on the side. So let's see what we got going on. We'll get a piece down in there. I think that'll do pretty well. Let's get those all laid out. We're gonna do another one right across there. We're gonna give that a shot. I'm gonna try and fill up some of that with some of this papawate. say that's it for plugging the holes for the moment now we're going to cut a piece that fits the entire top and we will glue it all down and see what she does this entire roll of foam costs 27 dollars at home depot which is an outrageous amount of money didn't used to be anywhere near that i don't think but it's way cheaper than 800 dollars for the cheapest upholstery job i could find All right, I got a little more trimming to do on it. Sorry about the variation in color. I'm just working in a lean-to. All right. We're gonna spray a whole bunch of juice on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do half at a time so that it stays where it's supposed to. We'll lay it down and then we'll do the other half. Take well. I shook it more than that before, so. All right, it says to let it set up for about two, one to three minutes. So we'll let it set up a little bit, maybe two minutes. We'll go with it right in between. Two minutes. Let's see what she does. Didn't seem like two minutes in YouTube land at it. Let's see. Now we'll flip this side up. We have to hold it with something. So we can spray the other side. Stick 
this girl down. And it's not perfect, but it's good. All right, so I bought a, a seat cover from a, a friend of mine who owns a company that sells, buys and sells Chevy truck parts, 1960 to 1987. <clears throat> and he had a guy build these seat covers for him off from original patterns. So this is going to be black with a black and white hound's tooth center. I think it's gonna look really awesome. So let's see what we get. It is leather, by the way. I don't have any idea in the world why I chose to go leather, but it does smell good. Well, let's see, there should be two pieces to it. So this should be the back, uh, the top side. And that should be This should be the bottom, right? Yeah. Let's just see how it's going to look. I've never done this before. A little bit of a pucker there. If they had a steamer, that would work. I see them do it on TV all the time. Let's take a look at it. Come on, man. That looks awesome. No, I don't have it all tightened down yet. I bought a thing with hog rings on it, or hog ring pliers. You see there where I'm talking a little bit of a pucker? I think if we had one of the fancy steam machines, it would take that out. I might actually get one of those. Not for specifically doing this, but for doing clothes. But you'll steam leather like that, and it will it'll tighten up. Anyway, I think it looks great. So that's a hound's tooth. This texture right here, or this pattern is called hound's tooth. And they had them, factory originals. So now what we're gonna do, I gotta get something to where it doesn't mark, um, you know, it doesn't make this, get this dirty. I need to flip it upside down, we'll tighten it all up and show you what we got. All right, so we have it upside down. I don't know why they have these on here, but I'm gonna take them off. Um, we're going to go through and do use what's called hog ring pliers, and I bought these off Amazon. I don't know why they have that. So hog ring pliers put on hog rings. And this was $16 for the kit, it has 500 hog rings and the pliers themselves, so hopefully they work out okay. And these little hog rings will go through, and we'll show it here. As we go through and do this right here, then we can pinch those hog rings on and they go around and, and crimp it. So hopefully this works out like I want it to. First they tighten the knot so you can't get into it. Those are really big hog rings there. I won't, may not use those. So basically this is a hog ring. It's a ring like this. You're going to Put it in these pliers, like so, and then you're going to squeeze it down and it pinches down around it so that it, it won't escape. So I think these are too big for what we're going to do, so we won't use those. I apologize, I've never done this before. I think this looks about right. So we're going to try and squeeze some of this down and see how it turns out. So he has a little lip on here that I assume goes right here and then this section pulls up. It's going to be very difficult to get that on there. I'm not sure how exactly this is going to work, but we're going to try it right now. I should not get in there. We're sure going to destroy this thing. So that is going to be very difficult to do. I'm wondering if they put it on with something other than hog rings. I've only heard of hog rings. I thought that's what everybody used. So 
But when I took it off, it had some little clips on it, which we didn't have all the clips, so I didn't use those. But I didn't think we were gonna, I thought we were using hog rings. These are the little clips I'm talking about they had. Let's see if we can make it happen with that. We might have to buy some clips. Let's go look at the internet. All right, they have this new thing called the internet. It's a really weird thing. You go on a computer and you can look up how to do things. And I was pretty right about the hog rings, but I didn't know that instead of coming right here where the factory piece is, I'm gonna come all the way to this edge and then crimp it to that. So I just wasn't taking it far enough. So we're gonna give another shot at this. From the factory, it did have these weird little clips I was trying to put in, which would work if you had new new clips like this but it doesn't seem to me based off of what I see on that new thing called the internet that anyone is doing it that way so so we'll just do it the way they recommend us we do it crazy huh that's just crazy talk as Tommy would say so basically like with anything else we're gonna pull this all the way to there and crimp it right there so like with anything else you start in the center and you work your way out so you don't end up having some big fold in the middle of it. So let's see how this goes. We're going to try one of these fancy hog rings. And hog rings pliers are sprung, spring loaded, sprung, spring loaded. So it helps in a situation like this, you put it in there and you can hold on to it with one hand. So let's see if this works. didn't work. I think that'll work. And we're going to move on around. So I think I'm going to try some little smaller ones just because the way this is going seems sort of like a smaller one would do better. Let's see what we got. This might be the smallest ones I have, but we'll see. Now, well, these are smaller. I won't give it a try. I don't like the way that one looks. It, it would work fine, but I just don't like the way it looks. I like that better. Now, when I went and looked on the internet, they had holes that were already previously done in theirs. We're going to try it like this because I don't want to mess up the factory thing. So we'll see if this works. If it doesn't, we'll have to go back and put holes in it. But I think this will work. Looking good so far. So I'm thinking I'm going to pull the track off so we can go all the way around and then put the track back on. So I'm going to be doing another one of these for Ben's truck. This is all solid black. He didn't like the hound's tooth feature. I think it looks nice. It wouldn't have been available on his truck though. That's, that's honest. This seat is on a 67 to 72 and you could have got that easily on that. Yeah, you'll probably fight with it a little bit, as am I. So I can't get that in there. Now I have a large pair of pliers around here somewhere. And I just don't know where they are.
All right, first attempt on my own doing a seat cover uh, ever. So anyway, uh, I think it actually turned out really well. You guys can do it too, check it out. So you see these little bit of wrinkles? That comes out if you steam it. And on the internet it says if you just take the steam function on an iron, that that will take a little bit of that pucker out. Otherwise, over time, it would probably do it also. Now I'm gonna pull this a little bit this way to get it out of the sun because I have terrible filming conditions here. Come on now. That looks pretty nice and a very classic look. All right, that's the bottom section. We're gonna do the top section. We haven't peeled the original upholstery off from the top section yet, so uh, you're gonna have the pleasure of seeing that happen. All right, so you can see the original upholstery. It's actually, yes, it needs to be replaced, but seat frame itself and the cushion and everything is in pretty decent condition. So we are going to strip this off and see what we end up with. These are these little clips I was telling you about, but we don't use those, I guess. Now, I don't know if you noticed, a bunch of foam come rolling out when we, when we flip this over. So I'm gonna look at this and see if we need to replace some of this or if we need to cover it with something so it doesn't, every time you sit on it, it doesn't turn into a dust bowl. So they do sell the, the back foam and everything for these trucks. So if we get in here and it's super bad, we may end up replacing it. They do sell the bottom also, but it's a couple hundred bucks. And you know, if you can make it look okay the way we just did right there, nothing looks great. So we'll see. All right, so we have foam right here that's pretty decomposed. It's good, all this, uh, this is cotton on the outside, but part of this is, is pretty decomposed. So I think what we're gonna try and do is, I'm gonna try and cut right along this line with scissors, remove that section, and we'll replace it with the padding that we have. So let's we'll see if that even works. So this cotton goes over the top nicely and should leave us a nice nice edge to the seat, so I don't want to try and replicate that. I'm not an upholstery guy, as I've already told you. See, this is just decomposing. That doesn't do us any good at all. So what I'm gonna do is when we get in here, I'm gonna peel the cotton up, and we're gonna replace all of the styrofoam. I couldn't get it to come off like I wanted it to come off. So. Thought I'd try something else. All right. You can see, there's just nothing left of it. Nothing left. So, I'll scrape some of this into the trash and see if we might be able to rebuild this thing. I think over here it's almost good enough that if we had some foam on there, I think it'll work. I think we can reuse the cotton. We'll put it right back where it was and we'll just replace the foam. So, to get some of that garbage out of there. I am going to go get some new burlap to lay back here, but I'm going to uh, get all this removed and then we're going to blow it with a hose to try and get some of that crap out of there. See this here, I'm hoping will pull out at least where I need it to. I might have to cut it a little bit also, but we're trying to keep this cotton because it makes up a really nice shape on the edge. But we don't want any foam that's decomposing. Peel it back. See that foam feels good up there. We'll just cut off the stuff that we don't, that we do need to replace. We obviously leave the stuff we don't. So let's get this stuff peeled off. Then we'll be able to blow everything out. Make it look pretty. Pretty. Alrighty, back from the store. We got me some nice black burlap. We're gonna line this here. We're gonna put our cotton back in and uh, we'll put down 
some styrofoam before we do that. And then we're gonna tighten this girl up. Here's our other section to it. Let's see what we do. All right, so we forgot to videotape. We did get one on. This is not enjoyable, but with Crazy Rob here to help me, we're gonna get this last piece pulled on and then we'll get you back outside. So my wife's real happy with me doing it on the kitchen table, but that's the way it is when you deal with someone like me. Um, Go through. Oh, well, All right, there's our hog rings installed. But the real question is, how does it look when we flip it over? up a little bit put some carpeting in and then um, I think I already showed you that we had done a seat the other day and so we're gonna try and get the seat installed today and make this look a little bit prettier than it is right now so let's go about the market on C10s is you can pretty much buy everything for them. It makes a lot of things very, very easy. What we have here is a nice little carpet kit and there's two specific kinds you can have. You need to know how high the hump is in the middle. It's either a low hump or a high hump. This one's a low hump because it was a factory automatic truck. So, bought this, I don't know, it's like 240 bucks or something. 
and it lays right in and it makes your life so extremely easy. So we'll dump it in real quick. Then you'll you'll screw down the the uh, door trim plates to hold it in. But uh, for now, because we're going to get new trim plates, uh, we'll just lap it over the top of it because you can do that afterwards. Anyway, beautiful kit. So we're going to need to let the sun <clears throat> sort of flatten this out and get some of the wrinkles out of it and get warmed up. And because this has factory seat belts in it, we're going to need to drill some holes or cut some holes in the carpeting so we can put our seat belts popped up through. But when it's all laid down and all flattened out, she's going to look real nice. Check it out. Completely changes everything, doesn't it? All right, well, Tommy's not here today, so I get to do this by myself. So I'm gonna put it in in two pieces. You normally wouldn't do that, but I can't get it in there by myself. Too old, too fat, and too weak, and too good looking. Hey, Chihuahua, it's a pain in the rear end. Whew. So when you go to install the back rest of the seat, you bring the panels in from the back side because it's narrower at the back. You try and push it down over the top, you're gonna tear stuff up. You're gonna scar your material. So I'm ready to start bolting this thing in. All right. Very classic, timeless look. This girl is looking good. Dash pad, it needs to be cleaned, yeah. Pretty good looking, I would say. Woohoo! That's what I'm talking about. So a little bit of upholstery, do-it-yourself 101. I hope you enjoyed it. You too can purchase a, a nice seat cover, and not a seat cover, but the actual piece that fits like it's supposed to. And you can redo your, your own seat instead of spending thousands of dollars having it done. Anyway, appreciate you guys coming and spending time with us. So Tommy was out ill this week, so I didn't have any video of him this week, but I wanted to go back into the archives and pull out some videos that we haven't shown you yet regarding the giveaway truck. And that's sort of leading up to us being able to finish up these other couple of projects and get started on the new giveaways because we want to give another truck away. So hopefully you guys will bear with us during this time and uh, you know, keep sending the comments. Give us a like, share it around, tell your friends. Hopefully you enjoyed what you saw today. And as always, thanks for watching.